Hi, thanks for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. One of the most common questions that I get asked about my near-death experience when I died in 2001 is, how were you up there for five years? Okay, I love that people ask me this question, firstly, because we are in a three-dimensional world where we base time on the length of time that our own planet orbits around the sun. So every day is one rotation around the sun, etc. Okay, so we then have the 24 hours, we have the 60 minutes per hour, then we have the 60 seconds. But when we get past this three dimensional world that we live in and we go out into the universe, time does not exist. So what I've got today is <clears throat> my book, obviously, first, Five Years in Heaven and the Teachings of Heaven. Um, you can tell how thick it is. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Because obviously, if I wrote down what I did for five years, this book would be in a library of volumes by itself. Okay. So I try to just touch on every facet that I went into when I was there. And that's why I like people watching my videos to get the clarification that they need. The other thing today that I've got here is my medical files from the, what was called the Cabarrus County Hospital in North Carolina, USA. And it's now called the Atrium. So about a year ago, one of my friends said, you know, Linda, you talk about your NDE a lot. Where's your evidence? I've now got my evidence. Obviously, I've blanked out my name, my date of birth, etc. for privacy. But you can see that it's my name here, Linda Ray. Okay, <clears throat> because I'm now Kramer is my surname now. I openly tell people I've been married twice. Once while I got married when I was 24, um, I left him. <clears throat> then I went over to America and I married the American. <clears throat> so obviously I don't want any association with my work to actually him anymore. Not that I'm holding any resentment or grudges to what he did because I'm very grateful for the opportunity he gave me. Okay. And I explain all this in here as to why I don't hold on to any negativity without, with what happened anymore. Okay, he was only doing what he could at that time with regards to me. A road curl in my hair. Okay, <clears throat> so I have my 168 medical file. It's got all my ECGs and everything is in there from the hospital with regards to what happened. You just saw an ECG just flick through. So look, there's all the ECGs and other stuff in there of when this event happened to me okay obviously if this wasn't my experience i wouldn't have all this information correct so look at it all it's it's quite in depth okay so one of the things in here is the medical um what happened with the paramedics so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to read an excerpt from my book five years in heaven whereby i talk about how the heck was I up there for five years? Okay. Chapter three is called the time of my physical death. Now, this is what happened with what my ex-husband told me his series of events were that night. Okay. So he, my husband stated, now this is on page 29 of my book. My husband stated that he woke up due to my banging on the wall. I'll tell you what I remember. I remember waking up, it was about two o'clock in the morning and I couldn't breathe. Um, I had a nebulizer, if you know what that is, you plug it into the wall and it's got an oxygen mask on it and you put Ventolin into it so it um, expands out the lungs. So I had a nebulizer and I remember trying to get to the ensuite of the master bedroom. It probably took me about 10 minutes to walk that time because I could not breathe. <clears throat> I was dying to go to the toilet. So please make a joke of that one right there. I was dying to go to the toilet. Um, 
<laughs> I laugh about my experience because I have to because it was so traumatic if I think of it in the wrong light. So I got to the toilet and I sat down and I plugged in the um, nebulizer cord in the bathroom. There was a sink with a PowerPoint on it. So I'm just sitting there with the mask on and I remember going to sleep. There was no way that I could have banged on that wall. A, I did not have the strength because it took me 10 minutes to probably walk 25 feet. Okay, so how the heck did he wake up to someone banging? Because, you know, I can bang and, you know, that took a little bit of strength. But for, to make the, the force on a wall that woke him up probably 25, 30 feet away, that would have taken a lot of strength, which I personally did not have at that point. So back to my book. He came into the toilet and found me on the floor. This is what he says, okay? Not breathing and my skin was blue. So the first thing, how long had I already been clinically dead? Could have been a long time, could have been seconds, okay? He ran back out past the clothes closet. So in my book, I actually have a, um, a floor plan, which I will show here because I drew pictures when I woke up. So here's the actual drawing, which I've now done better in my book. But as you can see where the bedroom was, um, there was a walk-in robe. Actually, that's not the right picture. Sorry, because I drew two. Sorry, let me just find it. Actually, I'll go back into the book and I'll find it in there. But there was, when you walk through the master bedroom, there was a um, walk-in closet. And then you go, here's a better picture. I'll show you this one. So as you can see here, there's my bed. And you've got to go down this little corridor past the walk-in closet and then come around the bathrooms here and the showers up the top and I was on the toilet so to make this bang it would have had to project all the way back out here to where the bedroom was this is where I was floating by the way for 45 minutes and I watched all the paramedics and everyone come in and um, when they wheeled me out from here um, back out through the front door which is over there I, I was actually floating here and I watched all the paramedics and the fireys etc in the living room so I remembered what they'd said I remembered their name badges um, and there's no way I would remember all that information if I was still in that ensuite, right? So let's get back onto track here. So he said that he woke up because someone was banging on the wall. That wasn't me. So I explain who that was back here, this woman, because she's always with me. He ran past our clothes closet back into the bedroom to get the phone and he dialed 911. He returned to me and checked my pulse and I did not have one. He stated that due to finding me lifeless and blue, he could not ascertain how long I had actually been clinically dead for at that time. He then started stated that under the directions of the 911 operator, which here in Australia it's now triple zero, he commenced CPR on me and he continued working on me until the BLS crew arrived. Now, they're called the basic life support ambulance that comes first. He further explained to me that whilst doing CPR on me, he must have pressed too deeply as he heard cracks. And I did have two broken ribs as a consequence of his CPR. OK, he stated to me that it was over 10 minutes, possibly 15 minutes from the first crew to arrive. And he left me to answer the door when the BLS um, a crew arrived and to give them access to where I was. So from the time that he rang the ambulance, we're now looking at 10 to 15 minutes before the first BLS Basic Life crew arrived. So I was still clinically dead for that whole duration. He stated that a second paramedic crew arrived, being the ALS Advanced Life Support Crew, approximately 15 minutes after the BLS crew arrived. So it took 10 to 15 minutes for the first guys to come. And then it was about 15 minutes after that, that the other crews came. 
So all up, it, that there is over half an hour and I was still clinically dead for this time. They advised him that they wanted to cut a hole in my neck to allow oxygen to get to my lungs, but he refused that treatment on my behalf, so therefore I was intubated. Okay? In all, he stated the emergency crews were inside the house for 45 minutes. This is verified by the medical files that I've now received on, from the hospital. So when I go back now, because I've now got my medical file, in here there is an ambulance report. And in that, they actually talk about how the BLS arrived and then it was 15 minutes after that that the ALS arrived. They came in and I was in the living room. You've got to remember this. I was in the living room watching all this take place. I was floating up near the um, ceiling in the living room watching it all. So I watched these second guys come in. When they came in, they were carrying heaps of equipment in these like big like suitcase things. And when they've gone in, it would have been minutes until they got me back because they actually um, were using CPR and they used the defibrillator on me as well. So all up in here, they actually say 45 minutes clinically dead. But we have to remember here that A, someone banged on the wall. That was not me. Who was that? And how long after I had actually expired did that bang wake up my husband? And how long did it take him to sort of wake up enough to get out of bed and then come searching out to find me? Did he go straight to the toilet is a question. He could have gone out into the living room, the kitchen or wherever before he found me in the toilet, correct? Okay, because he never actually mentioned that one to me. So I tell people that I was clinically dead for 45 minutes because that is what is now in here. But it could be a lot longer. So I was floating in the living room. <laughs> See how I just say that all nonchalantly. I was floating in the living room for 45 minutes. Now I've read possibly thousands of NDE experiences over the years where some people do say I left my body and I was looking down. I was looking down because I was up near the ceiling and I was observing it all. Some people say that they came back into their body at that point. Oh, they are the lucky ones. Well, or should I say was I the lucky one? Because when they wheeled me out and I saw myself, which I detail here in my book, that's when I went home for five years instantly after um, the blue orbs came in which I explain in my book um, I will go and show you some photos okay so these are the pictures that I drew when I woke up so yep so there's the map of where I died to um, where I was floating in the living room so I'll just hold that one up then when they wheeled me out all these blue orbs came in they opened the front door how the hell did they do that and they came and they were hovering all around me so i had all these blue orbs around me instantly they all decided because there was some sort of intelligent communication there but i was not part of that at this point because i was singular to them i was separated so they all left and it was like a community let's all go, go leave now so they all left and the front door shut then I went into the fog stage, which I explain in the book, which is that void that I've spoken about. Um, when I came into heaven, I was standing in that field of flowers. Now, I laugh at this because so many people say in their NDEs that they were standing in a field of flowers. So another thing that I have here is one of the diagrams of the flowers. So here's a type of the flowers that I was standing amongst, but there were thousands of them, all different varieties of flowers. So there's one of the flowers. So how long was I in this field of flowers for? I have no idea because I was looking around and observing the mountains over the back and I was watching the city over to my left and I could actually see around the back of me like I had eyes in the back of my head because everything was 
para um what do they call it panoramic panoramic it, it wasn't just my visual from here out i could see past that all the way around me okay because now i was the oneness within this so i wasn't relying on these anymore my eyes so i observed people obviously as i'm standing there nobody came up to me and started talking to me okay and it was it it was like it was normal that i was there normal so these people there was no oh my god who's that there was no oh my god there's a new one okay because as we look at ndes now where people say i landed in this field of flowers it's almost like let's make a joke here it's almost like there's a big x the landing mark you know x marks the spot we go to heaven and we all land on this one spot okay but i did not leave from that spot i didn't have to return back like a vortex or a stargate or some sort of other gateway back to my body okay so i landed in this field of flowers and i'm observing everything and i'm looking at the people who were changing into animals and animals changing into people and the flowers were communicating with me which i detail in my book but what happened is i started following people around so one lady that i do talk about in my book she went down through like valleys and she was walking like you do on a sunday stroll you know that casual and you're looking around and you're just observing there's no rush you know that sort of walking so she was only probably walking about 2 kilometers per hour and i naturally walk at 6 kilometers an hour i'm a fast walker um most people walk about 4 kilometers an hour is their normal rate of walking so this woman who i watched and she's just like casually stepping and she's looking she went down through valleys she went down around a lake she went down past rivers and streams and then she made herself through the mountainous range back to where the city was over to my left when i first arrived so i've sat here over the past 20 years and thought how many kilometers did she walk that day and it was hundreds she would have walked hundreds of kilometers that day and i followed her so if we're only doing 2 kilometers per hour multiply that by hundreds that's hundreds and hundreds of hours because there's only 2 kilometers per hour okay so uh, how long in time did i follow her for okay and she wasn't the only one that i followed around because i was up there for so long you know i was following around boys who were changing into bears which i explain in my book why they do that and who they are um but it was long 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 time You know, I was up in one of the buildings and I was just sitting there on a chair, which I explain the chairs in my book, right? Why are there chairs in heaven when we don't have a physical body anymore? But I was explaining how I'm sitting on this chair and connecting to everything else everywhere else. So how much time was that? So then it got interesting because I went back into this fog stage. and that's when i went into my life review which is the front cover of my book so these are the guys that i called the big 3 the energy was coming up like a reverse water fountain waterfall so the energy this is all energy and it was coming up into this like head shape where it's rotating left to right as well as right to left at the same time clockwise and anticlockwise they actually said to me you are not here to judge we are not here to judge i had to judge myself as to why i did everything that i did whilst i was in this linda body <clears throat> so another picture that's in my book i explain how i had, i looked into this box in front of them and it was eternal inside there was no walls there was no floor it was eternal in there there was no flooring or walls inside and it had billions and billions of all these little round bubbles with little tv screens in there like a video screen and they were all replaying videos from my life all the memories of my life so here's one of the pictures that i drew 
when I was a little girl sitting in the front yard. See, I've got a nappy on. Oh, God, you can't really... Don't look at my drawings. God, I'm not an artist, okay? But there I am as a baby, and I pull the tail of this white Persian cat that my grandmother had. So this is back in the 1960s. So I pulled out this memory out of my box, and I'm holding it in the palm of my hand. And there's all energy. So it's like an energy ball, okay? It's three-dimensional, like an orb of energy. And I'm holding this in my hand, and as I'm watching this video... First of all, I see it as external. So I'm watching a little girl playing with a cat. Then I became Linda in this. So I became this person here. I'm inside this child again. So instantly I was a child. And I am thinking about, oh, let's pull the tail of the cat. And ha, 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 how funny is it? So I had to delve into myself. And explain to myself without judgment why did you do that action so I had to go through that process and heal heal is the big question here heal that intention that I had to hurt the cat even though and I didn't think at that time because hell I was only a child probably eight months old why did you pull the cat's tail then I became the cat. So now I'm this cat sitting next to a baby. And whilst I'm in the cat, I could feel all the fur over my body. I could feel my spine going down into my tail as I wagged it. I could feel my paws on the grass. I could feel my ears flicking or tweeting or what do they call it? They prick, ears prick to noises and sounds. So now I was the cat. And when this little girl pulled my tail, the pain was horrendous down through my tail, all the way down through my spine. So then I had to heal why this cat was upset with the girl. Why was the cat upset? Why did you pull my tail for? Type thing. I had to heal that. Because then... As I came back out of this memory where I can now see the perspective of what I did and the perspective of what the cat did, I could heal that whole memory. So it was universally, energetically realigned into good positive energy. So this whole process took probably half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour? Because you've got to sit there and contemplate and you go through all the questions. Why did I do that? What was going through my head? What was I thinking about other things that were going on at that time as being a child? So the whole process for one memory would have only been about probably 45 minutes to an hour. And how many of me, these memories did I pull out of this box in front of me while I was standing in front of the big three? <clears throat> I pulled out thousands and thousands of these memories. So as I healed this memory, this video that was a hold, I was holding, it simply disappeared. It was no longer valid in my memories so I processed thousands of these memories some of them went for longer than a, an hour because of that ripple effect if I yell at someone today they get upset so then they go home they scream at their partner who then goes to work they're now upset they go to work and they take their retaliation out on someone at work that person at work is now in a bad mood because that person, that ripple effect has now gone to them. So then they go home and they're upset with their children who then don't concentrate on school the next day because mummy yelled at me last night type thing. So we have to go through every one of those steps and heal that energetic ripple of what we caused. Some of these memories, I reckon they went for months it wasn't just a year okay 
It wasn't just a year. And I processed thousands and thousands and thousands of these, probably 6,000, I say, in my book, because I'm just trying to keep it in line with what people in this three-dimensional world can fathom, okay? So how long was I in my life review for? One year? It could have been five just there, where I was standing in front, front of the big three, processing all these memories. So then after that, I left there through the fog stage and that's when I went to heaven, I'm um, sorry, I went into the white space where I met my great, 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 great grandmother. Here's another picture from my book. So here's my great, 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 great grandmother and I call this the white space because there was no floor and there was no walls and there was no ceiling. It was all just open space. And as she walked towards me, she was like this big on the horizon. And as she got closer to me, she got bigger because there was no floor. So I go into depth in the book about my time with her because I was with her for what I call over a year. You know, I say it like this. Imagine that you're on the phone to a friend. You know, your friend rings. OK, here's my phone. Your friend rings and you're there. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Really? Blah, 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 blah. So when you get off the phone, <clears throat> imagine a phone call that lasts for an hour and you sit there and you think, what was said during that hour? When I spoke to Karina, our conversations were months and months and that was just her telling me about her life. She went into great depth <laughs> explaining to me what life was like for her in the early 1800s. She explained how she... Um, would find a specific tree. Now, this is a very, very short version, right? She would find a specific tree and then she would make the axe. So she would detail how she made an axe, which went for <laughs> hours, how to cut a specific piece of wood to make a specific board that she made into this concoction that she then could fold and put it over her back. And then she'd walk down to the river. Now, when she was explaining the walk down the river, that was a couple of hours just there. And then she would get in and she would do her washing on this concoction of this mechanical device that she had built from the tree where she cut that wood from. So that was just one thing that she told me about. How to make needles to make clothing. How to make the string to put through the needle. How to make the cloth and get the cloth so then she could sew it with the needle and the thread that she made. So all these stories that she told me went for months and months. And then she started talking about me. She told me. Now remember, I died in 2001. She told me, you will be working with a great force. This force is the authority of where you live. They are the ones who control the laws. So that's the police. She said, I worked there for 10 years and I did work with the police. I was an administration officer for 10 years, 2002 to 2012. She then said I would need two years off to deal with all the, emo um, she didn't say emotional. She said the mental sickness that you, are, you get from this position. And I am very honest with what happened to me. I actually ended up with PTSD from my time with the police. You don't want to know what I used to look at, okay? So she said I'd need two years off, which I did until 2000, the end of 2014. <clears throat> then she said I would be a first aid trainer for two years, which I was January 2015 until January 2017. I did first aid training. And that's when she said that's when you are going to learn your lessons so then you can start telling people what heaven is about. And I did learn a lot of lessons during the police, how not to judge, how to, you know, police, and I, I will defend the police here, but they see someone doing criminal behavior, but they don't ask why they were doing that, okay? Whereas I sat with some of these offenders and I had the opportunity where I could say, my God, what happened to you today for, to make you do this? So I could understand their perspective. Because remember, the cat, okay? The cat. And I'll go back there with the cat. So, you know, we put ourselves into that other person's perspective. So then we understand 
why things happen. Here's the cat. So I became the cat in all these situations where I worked with the police. And then even in first aid training, I would go and explain why things happen medically to people because I, I started studying medicine. I started studying psychology, which I never finished my qualification, so I don't advertise that I've got those. So it was in about 2014 that I started my PhD, hence now I'm doctor, I've got a doctorate degree, um, my PhD. So, and also my CBT um, qualifications, my life coaching qualifications. So I can now do holistic work for everybody. It's not just, oh yes, I died and I went to home for five years. I now look at the science behind how all this stuff works, okay? So, how long was I in heaven for? I tell people it was five years. It could have been 50 years. It could have been 150 years. Because of the length of time where I sit there and try and, you know, I sit there at night still 20 years after this event. Because the memories of being home or the source, it's like it happened yesterday. It is so vivid and clear in my memory every single day. And that's also what a lot of other NDE you say too, by the way. It is so vivid and clear even 20 years later that I sit here at night time and I think, that lady wearing the black dress, I'm going to go back into that memory and just follow her again and try and calculate how many kilometres did she walk that day? Was she only walking two kilometres an hour or was it only one kilometre an hour or was it five kilometres an hour? And how long was that road that she walked down until she got to the lake and then she walked from there over to the forest and then she walked through a village and then she walked down that stone pathway. See, I've still got the memories. I can still see her walking down that path, like a cobbled stoneway and then she got to the city where there was more like bitumen roads and then she's walking around blocks and blocks of skyscrapers and going up into the towers of the um, magnificent architecture buildings there so how long was I there for I tell people five years but ultimately it could have been a lot longer so I hope that you like this explanation now you know why it's so hard for me to just explain it in a simple post on Facebook. But um, I hope that this gives you a little bit more insight. And keep watching my videos. You know, if you know somebody that's a friend or family and you think, wow, they'd be interested in this, please share my video to them or ask them to watch my videos. Because obviously, you know, five years or 150 years or however long I was up there, it can't be simply answered in a comment or even just one video, correct? And that's why I've got all these um, interviews that I've now done where you can go and listen to the likes of Jeff Mara, Simon Bone, even beautiful Bridget Peebles and also others that I've done, Spirit Sisters in Melbourne, just to name a few. But little bits here and little bits there. I hope that it all comes up to a collective of what I experienced. So then... We get that hope and belief that there is something past this three-dimensional world of where we go. Because one thing else, I do see ghosts. I do see spirits every day. They can come back and interact with us in this three-dimensional world. And when I was up home, I can understand how they do it. That might be another video, guys. So I hope that answers your questions today. How was I in heaven for five years? Okay, stay tuned. There's more coming. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.